Well, hi, everybody. Hi, welcome to um, our Wednesday night. And um, I'm, what are we calling this again? Don't, don't, don't explore your spiritual side. I love that name, actually. And it's We're Wednesday here. morning, just saying. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're here to explore our spiritual side. And I'm super glad that you're here with me to do that. Um, whether you're watching live or you're watching later. Um, you get the same impact. So that's totally awesome. Um, so I am a spiritual counselor. I've worked at treatment centers for many years, um, creating spiritual programming for centers. I also do uh, individual counseling and support for people who want to be supported on their recovery journey, recovery coaching. And uh, I'm a minister. So that's um, all extremely surprising things for me to say because I was an addict who didn't know anything about spirituality. <laughs> so I've come a long way, baby. And that's all been because of uh, my higher power and my God, the God of my understanding, which is mine and you've got yours. And today we're here to move into any grappling, to welcome it, to open up and hopefully our time together increases your faith and uh, helps you begin uh, really defining this thing called God, higher power, spirit, love, whatever word you use that makes you feel connected, um, help you expand that and to create a um, loving, supportive relationship with this power. I like to, when I teach, I tell people, the only thing you have to do is have a bigger God than your problem. Because if your God's bigger than your problem, you've got no problem. But the problem it does come in when our spiritual side is small and our problem is bigger than our spiritual self. The gap between the two is where we can find ourselves into deep trouble. And that's pretty common for addicts. You know, we have a broken spiritual concept of ourselves and, um, and of spirit. So that, that can... Um, that can create for a lot of pain and suffering. But the program, in my experience, has truly offered me um, so much healing in this particular area of life, which is obviously why I now have a career in this area. So, um, so I'm glad you're here. I like to begin our time together with about three minutes of just breathing and centering, meditating, whatever word you use. And I want, before we do this, I just want to say to you, um, you can't do it wrong. If your mind wanders nonstop and you just sit and close your eyes for three minutes and to the best of your ability, focus on your breath, then that is a big win. So um, you hit some silent pockets, you feel a little relaxation, that's a bonus gift, no doubt about it. And if you do it more and more, you will have more and more of those experiences. But wherever you are, we're showing up to the mat and the rest takes care of itself. So please join me if you can in closing your eyes if you're in a place and a time and a location where that's possible. And begin to connect with your breath, breathing in through your nose, nice, slow inhale, breathing in. And exhale through your mouth. Feel that body relax. Again, breathing in through the nose. Fill up as far as you can go and exhale through the mouth. And imagine your spine growing a little taller, creating more space within you. And just focus on the breath. Follow the sensation, feel the sensation of the breath coming in through the nostrils. Follow its movement in and down. Notice when it loops and begins to become an exhale and follow the exhale. And see if you can just focus your mind there for a few minutes.
release the thought, return your attention to the breath. One more time, release the thinking, return your attention to the breath. And we'll begin our time together by speaking the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. All right. Boy, more and more, I realize there are days when my focus is on all the things I cannot change. (laughs) And that makes for a crazy mind. That that is a monkey mind and uh, very dangerous. For an addict to be doing that. Um, so I've got a nice little turnout here. Glad everybody's here. Thanks for showing up. Um, today, and we begin each month, I begin each month with um, focusing on the spirituality of the step of the month, just following lining the steps up with the number of the month. So this is the third month, which is the third step. And it is truly um, a highly, highly, highly spiritual step. Um, So the third step, if you don't know it, is made a decision to turn my will and my life to the care of God as I understand God, praying only for the knowledge of God's will. Is that correct? Did I get that right, Tammy? (laughs) I should have wrote it down. It's a slightly adapted version, but it's all good. So yeah. 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 How do you say it? Made a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understood him. Oh, so it didn't add, the other one was off the 12th. So, okay, good. I blend them all together in my head. Okay, perfect. And that's a perfect place to stop. So that's perfect. Um, so if we can take, I'll take a moment and just kind of talk about it because the, the third word is, is the most powerful, pivotal word in our lives is making a decision. And that is where, as an addict, that may be very, very confusing because I know there's probably a part of you that wants to decide (laughs) to go in other directions. I know there's a part of you that would love to decide to be free and to not be in suffering if that's where you're finding yourself. So, um, so, you know, the, the idea of, you know, I made, you know, when I was, when I was, acting out sexually a lot, I'd wake up every morning and make a decision not to do it. But you know, as the day went on, the cycle began, the habit, the addiction took over at a certain point, and then once again, down the rabbit hole, I went. So my ability to trust my decision making became very, very broken. Now, that's in the throes of the addiction. But the same thing works on the side of recovery, where we, we make the decision, we focus our mind and our attention on the will of God, made a decision to turn my will and my life over. Now, this is the step that um, I was taught to do down on my knees at my bed <laughs> in the morning. And I actually have come to like that. I've been very challenged by that in my earlier days, but I find it to be quite wonderful to humble 
myself and to literally put my hands in prayer and close my eyes and take a breath and then just say that step, I make a decision today to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand God. And um, there's, there's so much power in decision. And although the decision making or your experience of making decisions around addiction, if it's like mine, didn't work many, 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 many times, um, it doesn't negate the amazing power that is inside of deciding. And some, and from my experience, you know, making the decision to turn my will and my life over, it's like the attic had so much fuel in it, like just this monster fuel. And my decision to turn to God is like this little tiny drop. <laughs> it's so tiny because it's new. And so, you know, it, it over time was my experience a reprieve here or there, doing it over and over and over, if that was what required. My willingness to do that is where the muscle begins to grow, the, the big monster begins to shrink, and the muscle to trust and follow the will of God grows. In my experience, that was over time. That wasn't a, oh, I woke up one morning and I made the decision and boom, everything was, was better. No, it was making the decision and then making the decision and then doing it again and falling down and getting back up and falling down and getting back up. I never want to say that that's the universal path of addiction, but I think it's common for, for many that to make the decision to give my will and my life over to God, like that's a big idea. I, I wasn't doing that. Since I was a little kid, I, for some reason, something clicked inside of me that said, I'm on my own and I'm doing, I got to figure out my life. I, that was an early click. So I had a lot of years of, of that kind of thinking. So making the decision is like a light switch. It's like, boom, I make the decision. But then we move into the deeper, um, kind of gray area and experience of it because to turn my will and my life over to the care. I love the word care of God. And if our God concept is broken, this is where it becomes very, very scary and very, very challenging. But this is the step where the God concept grows because there's nothing like you making the decision and making the decision. And then you bump up against something and you have a little bit of letting go. And then somehow something good comes in your direction. Somehow you, you by step a dangerous situation or you don't return the text or something happens where you have a, a breath of freedom. And that's, those are the tiny little moments we're looking for because those are the moments that we want to grow and grow and grow. Today, my entire life really is my will and my life is over to God. And I want to tell you something. When I'm in the sweetness of that surrender, it, that's the perfect word. It is sweet. There's like an immediate, oh, <laughs> I'm not steering this ship. I'm not in charge of my life. And again, for me, that took years to get to, but every time I get there, there's like a, there's like a newness to it. There's like, there's a freshness to that surrender, like day one or day 10,000. <laughs> there's just a letting go of an exhale because our world is so fast turning and there's things coming at us from so many directions and opportunities for sexual intrigue, relationship intrigue, all of that is just around us. It's on the televisions. It's on the bill. It's everywhere. It's, it's accessible in our phone. We know this. You know this. So there's a lot coming at us. So to be in the center of all of that and to take that deeper breath and to make the decision, that, that's the game. And that's to me where a whole new energy rises up where I can begin the healing with the step one, two, and three for me are the beginning of the healing process so that I can move into the middle portion of the program, which is where the work really kind of this, the introspection and the things like that are coming down the road. But the third step feels to me as precious, as an important today 
um, and every day. And it's like, it, it really is the, I get to begin again. I get to be made new. I get to be made new today. You know, the, the big book says that um, we only have our, our like, oh, I'm so bad at this stuff. I try to quote things. Um, our daily reprieve. What is that one? Help me out again, <laughs> Tammy. Like we only have recovery at, um, what am I trying to Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. So our daily quote, Tammy and I together. <laughs> Thank you. So we get a daily reprieve from our addiction, and it is according to our spiritual well-being. I think that's an important component of it. And so the daily reprieve is like a a, a begin again kind of an opening. So um, my life and my will; those were the things. My will was running riot. My will was out of control. My will was seeking instant gratification. And underneath it was enormous pain, running, running from pain. So, the, you know, I was seeking relief <laughs> for sure, but I was going to where it was temporary at best, and then it caused more harm on the other end. I mean, that's just what addiction does. Addiction gives us the illusion of, of relief. And it's so seductive that, you know, I'm, allure, I'm lured into it, but then the other side, you know, is, is where, where the pain body is. So that was my will. That was the best that my will can do. And maybe you can take a moment and just pause and go, what's the best my will? has gotten me, <laughs> you know, it's a good thing to consider, you know, because when I paused and I thought, yeah, my will alone <laughs> is, is not the way to go. So that gives me the pause to go, okay, so there's, there is something greater, which we touched in step two, there is something greater. And it's like building a new, you're building a new relationship. So let's go to the next part. Let's go to turn my will and my life over to the care of God. Now, for me, God has become not a person or a being up in the sky or not a, you know, the typical images that, especially in our Western culture, may not be yours, but typical images are a, a patriarchal male white man that's keeping score and that is going to punish me. So that God concept is just not workable. But that's all I had. That's all I had. But again, living my life, turning my will over, paying attention is where I got a whole new experience of what God is. And today, God is literally for me, it's literally for me, a loving presence. And it is within me. And it's all around me. My access point to God comes through my decision to surrender my will in my life and my experience. So that's the access point. But my experience of God happens when in my conversation with my higher power within me, in my interactions with people around me, surrounding myself with people in program, surrounding myself with, with whatever I'm needing to get healthier and healthier and healthier um, with my sponsor. Um, those are the ways that I experience the flow of this loving presence is in relationship, being connected. So let me say that again, because I think it's really important. Um, the decision is what opens the access point to the presence and then the living of it, giving my will in my life, getting me out of the way. You know, there's a saying, um, I, I don't know, it's like Emerson or something like that. It was like, um, um, I need to get my bloated nothingness out of the way. <laughs> my bloated nothingness is my ego, my best thoughts, the addict, whatever way, you know, my big old pride is, is one of our problems. Getting that out of the way is what creates the opening the access point. Now, who are you going to be? How are you going to build this relationship? Turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand God. That's the transformation we're seeking here, a new understanding. And, and if your God concept, like I started with this smaller, 
than the problems you're facing, that God concept can be changed. That's the beauty of spirituality. To me, that's the beauty of the 12-step program is, is that we seek a God that works for us. And I'm going to tell you a story that, um, that was a, a big transformation for me. Now, I want to begin with saying for me, because it's, it's very unique to my experience, and, and you would have your own. But I was in India for 30 days. I was staying at an ashram, and I'm one of those guys that's just like, insatiable with like my addict has kind of gone towards spiritual quest and that's fine with me because it's a much better way to steer that energy <laughs> and i was in india for 30 days at an ashram and um it was very spiritual lots of meditation it was exactly what what the god of my understanding led me to do for my health and for my recovery and for you know my expansion and i had this amazing moment where I was experiencing Jesus. I was thinking about Jesus. And I'm like, I'm not a Jesus guy. Like, I don't, this isn't my thing. But like, it just kept kind of being in my head. And I talked to the, the monk teacher. And I was like, you know, I'm like thinking about Jesus. And I'm not a Jesus guy. I threw Jesus out. I was a young Catholic boy. I threw him out early on. And the monk very, very lovingly was just like, well, why don't you just be open and have a conversation and just see what's there for you? And that was a very lovely invitation. Just see what's there for you. This is no way I follow Jesus talk. Trust me, it's not. My personal experience was, so I opened up. I was like, what's going on here? What's within me? And my relationship, my understanding of Jesus became one of just friendship and kindness and care. And it was none of the things I was taught as a kid. And I thought, wow, that's really healing. <laughs> it felt very, my understanding changed. And it was really healing for me to have that. And then it was like this, a voice inside me, Jesus, whatever was inside me going, this is how you can have your higher power. Make your higher power your best friend. And I loved that because for me, I didn't have good relationships with parents. I didn't have good relationships with family. Like I didn't have relationship structures that felt really safe, but friendship was, was safe for me. That for me, friendship is the way that I really go deep, spiritual friendship. Like I have those from the program. I have those from the work I do in the world. Like I, friendship is my everything for me. So it was like, all right guys, so okay, so make your higher power your friend. Make your higher power your best friend. And God, higher power, whatever word you use, suddenly it opened up inside of me where I felt free. I felt free to converse and to ask and to share and to be honest. Because suddenly in my experience, my God that was broken and judging and external. That was not trustable. <laughs> I was not going to, to give up my addiction to that. I, I couldn't talk to that kind of a God concept. But when that changed and suddenly it was in my heart and it was friendly and it was compassionate and there was no judgment, that was key for me. No, I was not feeling judged or being judged. Suddenly what started coming out of me was just so profoundly healing and my relationship changed. And today I really do have a God concept that is so much bigger than whatever I'm experiencing. Now I still need to make my decision. <laughs> I still have to get, you know, like I make the decision to turn my will and my life to God. And what that means for me is love and support and guidance and never, ever, ever, going to be led astray. I really believe that. Not only do I believe that, I really believe today that God's will for me is so much greater than I could ever um, create for myself. So to get to the point where there's that much surrender and there's that much freedom inside of my relationship with spirit is, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. And you can have that. You can absolutely have that. So my invitation to you today is to spend some time, like 
I, I may have given this before, but you know, I'll just repeat it. Like, you know, take a piece of paper and write down all the God concepts that don't work. Just write them down, like get blurred it all on the page, you know, judging, scorekeeping, mail, um, outside, um, gonna send me to hell, whatever beliefs you had or things you heard, because you may not have been taught a specific thing in your household, but we all grew up in a big culture with some real messed up ideas about who God is and who God isn't. Just take a moment and get it all on a piece of paper and look at that piece of paper and and the negative parts, by the way, just the negative parts, just put those on a piece of paper and de decide, make a decision. This piece of paper, this is not my God. This is not who I am choosing to call God. And literally crumble that paper up, throw it away, burn it, flush it down the toilet. Do some kind of a ritual where you just get rid of that old negative, the negative concepts. And really do an exhale, really let that go. And then get a different piece of paper and write my new God concept on it. And then, you know, ask, think about it. What do you want? What do you need your God concept to be? Do you need your God concept to be like a, a parent figure that's very loving and directive? Do you need your God concept to be a mentor? Do, you know, whatever. What qualities, loving, kind, non-judgmental. Um, it's more about the energy for me about, I don't have a physical idea today about what God is, that that is dissolved within me. I just have within me now uh, the, the feeling tones of, of who God is. God is my friend. God love. God is love. God is the peace. God is divine direction. You know, I like that um, good orderly direction. That is God. Grab those bumper sticker sayings, <laughs> you know, like put them on a piece of paper and then really say, what, do, what works for me? That's your new understanding. And then you focus on that and you look for that and you look for those experiences and you feel those experiences and you start naming these experiences as an experience of God. That's the, the, the making the decision to name it, making the decision to have a new idea about God, making the decision to turn your will and your life over. There's all of these things are in your power. And if you'll actually give it some focused time, it will grow. It will absolutely grow. I promise you that. My, the only reason I'm alive today is because of my God concept, because I turned my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood God. And because my understanding of God changed, I am alive. And I really mean that. I don't know where you are on that idea, but, or where you are in experience of your addiction or, or what you're here for, but it's absolutely profound. It's, 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 it sounds crazy. It sounds like I'm a crazy guy because I'm such a normal dude, but it's like my everything. <laughs> like there is a point where I just crossed over into like, I don't want anything else, but because my life works that way. So that was a big download, a little all over the place. I apologize for that. I did not sleep at all last night. I've been having some insomnia, but I'm here and I'm happy to be with you um, today. So I'm going to toss back to you, um, Tammy, if you have any thoughts. And if yeah, anyone, has any I always have thoughts, you know, so yeah, so, so, so much. It was interesting when you're just talking about, you know, you don't have an image anymore. And I thought, I don't either. Or like that was one of those realizations because I had the, you know, the growing up, the, you know, the, the typical Midwest America, you know, concept of what God was and the punishing and, you know, keeping score and that I could never, you know, I, you know, you can never earn your way in, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And so, but I thought I don't have a visual image. It is more that, you know, that sense. Um, you know, I've often said though, um, that I don't know what people do that don't have you know, a, a God concept, you know, a, a higher power for them, because, you know, in my moments of trouble and distress, that's what, you know, that's what I lean into. Like, like I have this security of knowing that there is something bigger that I'm, I don't have to figure it all out. Um, and it's, it really provides that sense of, of security and, and peace. You know, you talked about, you know, surrender and freedom. And I thought, and that was such an, uh, an opposite concept, because 
Mm-hmm. You, you know, my will was actually my control, my, my desire to control all the everything. And I bumped into that again um, a couple weeks ago. Since we last talked, you know, I was not in a mindfulness. The, there, it, there was a situation and I was, I, I so cared about the outcome. I was trying to manage every detail and I was making myself crazy. I was making lots of other people, you know, kind of, they were like, we're concerned, you know, and, and I finally had to go, wait a minute, you know, the serenity prayer, you know, I had to go, what do I have control over? I have control over myself, my actions and my reactions. And what am I trying to do? Control every little detail of every little thing. And how's that working out? You know, I'm driving everybody crazy. And, and so I, said the serenity prayer, I went to a meeting and I realigned. And I thought about when you're talking about, you know, I made a decision, I had to remake that decision. You know, like at at this point, I still had to remake that decision. And I do on some level every day, but that was like one of those I went, I am deciding right now in this moment to do that. And I had to go make amends. Um, And, you know, I have tools, I have tools to use to be able to make amends, you know, when my life is, you know, when I'm trying to, you know, control the ship again, because, it, it, it doesn't work. It, the more I align my will with my higher powers, like I, you know, I live that sweetness you were talking about, you know, like I get it. I get like, as, as soon as I go, ah, you know, I, it, it's, you know, like, I don't, I don't have the burden of the world on my shoulders then, you know, it's like, I, you know, I can do this, but I really relate to the God concept that didn't work. I don't think I could have remained in recovery if I tried to live by the God concept that I grew up with, but it's been an exploration like you were talking about too. It's like, like it's still a journey and, and I'm confident, you know, that I continue to learn and grow and my concept can change. It isn't like, like when you wrote stuff down, I was like, you can write that and you can rewrite that. You can add, you can change, yeah. you can change your list because you know, you, you learn something about yourself, but you also learn something about what you need and want from your God concept. I thought it was brilliant when you were sharing about your journey in India and you're like fighting against the image. And as soon as you started saying that, I was like, there, there's something there that's negative and you need it to feel. And that's exactly what you got. It was like, you had this willingness to go there. You had somebody, a friend that was able to go, just go into it and you did. And then you had this amazing healing and your concept changed again. And, and that's what I love. This is a journey. Like, you know, thank goodness that the God concept that I learned the first 30 days when I was, you know, starting this adventure is I'm not saddled to that one. I've been able to, in fact, you know, I, you know, I was in a church and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I left the church for a period of time. Um, And then when I, I, I found I wanted to go back or I wanted, I wanted some, I went I chose a different one, but, but I, but I had this kind of yearning to connect in a different way. So that was a meaningful part of my journey, you know, was kind of healing around, you know, that whole thing, you know, for me as well. It's, it still has a different place in, you know, like what I do now, how I live it out is very different than what I was raised with or even early recovery for me, so. Yeah, and we are not, I wanna interrupt you just because I wanna say to everyone, like, we're not promoting church oh, no, at no, no, all. No, 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 this fact, is sharing fact, my journey. Churches, churches can be the most not spiritual places. I 100% <laughs> Sometimes I really mean that, like the 12 step rooms are so spiritual to yes. me. Because they're yes. telling truth, because yes. they're creating a new life together. Like I, I really, I do think that 12 step, you know, that is the new church for me. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. And, and, yeah, yeah, and and if I rank things, it'll be a meeting over. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it, it absolutely. So, so, yeah. but I did also really shop because I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to engage with that, I want it to be something that aligns with, you know, my belief system and not the rigid. For me, it was a very rigid system that you know I was raised with. So, so yeah, totally. This is not about Jesus. This is not. This is about a higher power that works for you. I'm sharing part of my story, you know, because I had a whole bunch of stuff that absolutely did not work. You know, in fact, the, the shame of you know, because I would like, I every in, I'd pray, please don't let me do that same stuff. Please, you know, take this away. And I knew that I wasn't doing it right because, like, I would 
just go back out and do it again. And you know, like the insanity of all of that. So I knew that I was, sorry. That's okay. Um, I knew that, that, that I must be that bad if, you know, if my prayers couldn't be answered, you know what I mean? I mean, like it, it added this extra layer of shame and guilt to me, you know? Wow. So I had to come through all of that to find the freedom and the no judgment. What, that's what I've learned is like, it's not judgment, it's love. Yeah, it is love. I want to say something that you said that made me think of this, and this is cool for all of us. I don't know exactly how you said it, Tammy, but there's someone talking about the understanding as, and again, back to the step, as you understand it. And this is a very simple formula. If you don't understand it, then it ain't it. Yeah. You think yeah. about, okay, this God out there, I don't understand that. Great. That's not the right concept. It's actually, I'm getting an insight. Like, it's very simple. You can... It's important that you understand what this God is. That's all that matters. And any church, any religion, any anyone who's telling you about a God, if you walk away going, I don't understand that, then it's not yours. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how beautiful this presence God is to me. God can be understood by everyone in every way perfectly for them. And no one has the same exact experience but certain you know religions and organizations want everyone to have the exact same idea of what this thing is and that's not how it works so i i just really appreciate that insight and i want to say to you guys like you know check it out i don't understand that idea about god well then let it go <laughs> you right. are invited to know that if you don't understand it it ain't it right so, right i got and, that from your therapy. Think, you know our like there will be things like our experiences are different, but there's also going to be things like, like I a hundred percent resonate with, you know, love, you know, the, the, the love, the freedom, the sweetness, there are going to be things I think, you know, if you have something that's really working for you that would resonate kind of across the board, but you know, certain other things that, you know, uh, are not like your understanding and my understanding aren't going to align a hundred percent. Right. But some common, right. you know, common things. And just knowing wow. that, um, like that, um, like the friend that's always there for you, like that is a huge thing for me. Like that, you know, that I can a hundred percent trust when people let me down and I let them down, I'm human. You know, I get that. But like my higher power never lets me down. He doesn't always, he or she, it, it I still use he because of pronouns, but you yeah. know, it, um, it doesn't always say yes if I'm saying prayers, you know, it, and that's okay. You know, I, yeah. I believe that it's bigger. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, such a big concept and I love it. I hope you all are getting some good out of this. Um, if you've got any thoughts, feel free to put a comment in the chat. Um, or and if, questions in the Q and a, yeah, either, either one. So yeah. Or do, do, do they have to raise their hand if they want to raise uh, their hand? Yeah. We don't do that because we record these. So I don't want, Got it. So they can yeah, write. So, so if you, yeah. If you write something in the Q and A, I'll read it. If you write something in the chat, we'll, you know, we'll read it and address that too. So, um, cool. but yeah, what also, does... there's a third step prayer. Um, uh, and I, I did pull that up. So, um, I'll share that. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt a little old school because this was written in the 1930s probably. So yeah. relieve me of the bondage of self that I may do better or that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them will bear witness to those that I would help of thy power, thy love and thy way of life. And, you know, I think it's thy love, you know, that, you know, that's the part that strikes me with the third step prayer too, is you know, relieve me of the bondage of self, meaning like, take away my wanting to be in control of everything. You know, it serves, it doesn't serve me or anyone around me. Well, you know, just for my obsession. Life. Yeah. You know what? It's so interesting because I'm realizing, cause I, I, I tagged the end of the prayer onto the end of the third step because yeah. I think <laughs> I was like, I was blending them together. Yeah. I love the third step prayer. Please everyone listening, Google it, download it. Um, that memorize it, memorize it. Um, that actually is, is one, um, and, and it slipped away, but I, I would do that one in the shower. 
yeah. for a long time, you know, just with the water coming over me, hands yeah. on my heart, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt relieve me of the bondage of self. I would just do it over. Like it's such a loving, powerful, connecting prayer. That's what I think it's one of those prayers that really connects us to our higher power. And eventually over and over, I'm telling you, you'll just have that letting go. The trust will grow. You know, you talked about um, trust. And the problem is that because our trust was so broken in the human world, we projected that broken trust onto God. And your life, your recovery can really take off when your trust in God is healed. Because I, you know, my saying is trust God, love people. Yes. Don't try to trust people because yeah. people aren't trustable. Like, like Tammy said, we're human. We make mistakes. It's always going to not work in the human realm, but you're always going to be able to trust your higher power. So oh, there's a question. Does anyone have firsthand experience with the healing heart chakra? I, I'd love a firsthand account if anyone has one to offer up. I suffer from 24-7 heart pain since my last D-Day two years ago. The doctors have no diagnosis, so I'm looking for alternatives. Mm. Is that something you've explored? I do. I do chakra work, and I've done healing work with chakras. Um, uh, I would just highly recommend, um, if you've done all your medical work, because we are not medical doctors here <laughs> at all. We have no thoughts on, on that. Um, but if you're looking to explore... Um, the healing work of chakras, you could really just go to YouTube and you will get just many wonderful meditations. Just enter heart chakra meditation and there's lots of, of wonderful guided meditations. And if you feel drawn, that's a very Eastern spirituality, the chakras. Um, it, it, they're very healing and there's lots of ways to do that. You can also Google um, chakra healers and you can then you'll also be able to explore and a lot of people in that realm of work can do virtual so they can be in oklahoma and you can be in new york and and you know i i don't have enough experience around that kind of healing but i know it is out there okay uh, you to explore and i'm familiar with it on some tangential level but when she's i yeah, assume she is asking for firsthand experience i'm like i'm not qualified so yeah, yeah. You know, I think, you know, I think anything, um, uh, so uh, first of all, I want to honor, you know, um, I'm assuming you're a partner. My, I can't tell you how many partners, you know, have physical manifestations, you know, the autoimmune, I mean, have real um, health manifestations of, you know, of the betrayal of the trauma and things like that. So, uh, you know, I 100% encourage you to find you know, ways to heal. And, you know, uh, you know, this is clearly non-invasive. I think any of the, you know, meditation, mindfulness things, yes, they can only help us, you know? So, yeah. um, so yeah, yeah, I would, I would encourage that. So, but I'm sorry yeah. you too, because that really is, um, I know the pain is, is very real. So, yeah. So Jonathan wrote, I just wanted to ask, I just wanted to say that I love this idea of asking what would a higher power have to be in order for me to be able to make the decision described? Yes, good. I'm glad you got that. Because sometimes I'm really verbose. <laughs> and I'm like, Mark, stop talking. <laughs> and I can't. So I'm glad that you got that because that really is, what is it for you? And that is the step as you understand this higher power. And yeah. that's so again, as we're, as we're coming to a close, if anyone has any other thoughts, we're here. Um, but I just want to summarize again, the invitation, and I really invite you to do this is, like I said, do that exercise, dump on a piece of paper, all the things you don't understand, and the things that don't work and crumple it up and throw it away. If you don't understand it, it's not yours. And then bring it into a place where what, 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 how would you like to understand your God? And by the way, it doesn't mean you won't grow. Like, like you mentioned earlier, you may understand something two years down the road <laughs> that you didn't understand today, but then two years down the road is when you'll, you know, I trust my understanding grows when it's supposed to grow. And if I don't get it today, I'm not meant to. I keep that super, super simple. What we do know is that there is a higher power that can help you heal your mind, your heart, your everything, and put you on a path of recovery, whether you're a partner, whether you're an addict, co, wherever you are on your journey, 
And there are people on this planet healing every day from this disease and creating new lives of contribution. And Tammy and I are two people. Like, I'm just like, I, I love me getting together with you once a month. We are, give our lives to, to away. And it's such a lovely thing to be able to do. Our lives have been changed. And Absolutely. When you're talking about that too, I was thinking, like, like I actually had a visual of different phases, like the early phase of, you know, of shedding, it was almost like shedding the old yeah. version, because it was like, it was so painful. And it was so, you know, it was so contrary to, um, to how I'd been living in addiction, like it, it just absolutely didn't work. And then, you know, then there was the initial phase, but like, even, you know, I swear in the last, um, even in the last probably three or four years, like it's continued, like there was a, another major shift for me. So it, like there have been profound moments of shift, you know, as I've continued to grow in my understanding and my relationship with my higher power. So sorry, it honestly is. That's totally fine. I've been like that today. So, but, um, uh, so <laughs> I, I guess what I'm saying is I invite people to, continue to be willing to make those decisions, you know, just to make a decision to go, I'm going to just see where it is today. So, oh, thank you for putting that in there too. So, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, so uh, um, Mark Anthony put in the chat, feel free to, you can Google it too, but if you want to copy and paste it out of the chat, he put the third step prayer in uh, for you. So you can copy and paste it. Um, um, like, I know you, you were like, this is my go-to prayer. Mine is always the serenity prayer. Cause I've needed that so badly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it has all been right. like that all day. So taking a moment for mindfulness has been very good. So, yeah. So I'm, so we're going to begin wrapping this up. If anyone else has any questions, um, one more opportunity for you to just do that. I see one in the, uh, in times of very big, big hardship, like betrayal, trauma, I sometimes lose connection and hope with my God. But after, after feel disconnected from God and I start to feel worse. So I make a conscious decision to reconnect and I know he will always accept me. Yes, yes, that's beautiful. It is the, yes, the pain of feeling separate is, is deep and dark. But the connection when it's there is very healing. So thank you for writing that. That was very sweet. All right, so I'm going to invite you. I did put this prayer in here. I'm always grateful to Tammy for hosting this and, and helping us to do that. Um, and I also want to let you know, um, I'm going to put this out there. This is my, uh, can I put my email in here, Tammy? Okay. So there's my email. If you guys want to write to me and just shoot me, this is my God concept. This is, if you just want to witness, <laughs> if you just want someone to support you and going, you know, this, this is, this is where I am. Um, I'm, I'm happy to take a look at it and, and to help you if I can do that for sure. That's my, that's my support for you. But let's take a nice breath together and we're going to say the third step prayer. And if you can do that with me, that would be wonderful. Take a nice um, breath. Whoo, and exhale out. Lots of information in this past, not even an hour. Take another breath. And as you exhale, we know that only the information that you need is what remains for you. We don't need to figure all of this out. We trust God that everyone's getting what they came here for. And if a little more is available, that's beautiful. We're grateful. And so we say together, if you can stay with me, great. If not, I'm going to say for all of us, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. May we do God's will always. And may we all know together that the will of God is health and happiness and sobriety and connection. The will of God is peace. The will of God is a meaningful life of contribution 
The will of God is that we feel loved. And that's what I say yes to for myself and for all of us today. All right, my friends, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Tammy, all the time. I'm very, very grateful. And I will see you next month, which will be here like that. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye, everybody. Bye.